Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the next episode of Joe Kelly's Psychedelic Experience. What's going on with you, my friend? Your old pal Joe here checking in with you on a motherfucking Wednesday this week. How's it going? How's it hanging? Listen, I hope you're doing well, my friend. I hope you're doing better than you ever thought you possibly could be doing. And if you're not, as always, it's a okay. All right. But get your shit together for once in your life. All right. I don't think I need to hound on you anymore. What the fuck have you been doing with your time on this planet other than wasting it? So get your shit together and Achieve your wildest dreams by simply getting your shit together. Got some stand-up comedy shows coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, real quick, before we get to that, this episode of the podcast is brought to you by our good friends at Magic Mind. Go to magicmind.com, use the promo code Joe, get yourself 20% off. Also, if you'd like to support the podcast and my comedy and the things that I do in life to try and entertain you fine people, patreon.com slash utilize shrooms is a great way to support. Get your bonus videos, bonus podcasts, and all sorts of fun stuff. Different morning check-ins than what the regular public gets. All at patreon.com slash utilize shrooms. Coming up shows, shows coming up, whatever. You guys know what I'm trying to get at. I'll be in Pittsburgh this Thursday with my good friend Aaron Weber at the Improv. Also, Laugh Boston. I'll be there Friday and Saturday. You can probably figure out where that is. Uh, Next week, September 1st, Yazoo Brewing Company in the great city of Nashville, Tennessee. I'll be headlining that one. And then I'll be in Huntsville September 22nd at Low Mill for uh, Epic Comedy Hour. And then Seattle, the 29th and 30th of September. And then once you know it, Salt Lake City, Utah, the 5th and the 6th. JoeKellyComedy.com has more dates and all the upcoming information about what's going on with me and where I'm going to be slinging the yucks. So go and check that out if you want to know. All right. How have you been, my friend? What's been going on with you this week? What did you get into? How's it been? I was... uh, I was in Cleveland. I was in Cleveland, Ohio this past weekend doing some shows. Great, great fun times. Uh, I do. I don't think babies should. I think there should be a separate plane for people with babies to fly on. I don't think you should be allowed in the general public plane if you have a, an infant that's going to cry. I just. I, that's you know. That's something I realized that I I stand strongly behind is that. You either got to check it with the baggage, put it in the suitcase, put some holes in there, whatever, let it breathe. Uh, overhead overhead bin could be fine too. That'll muffle the crying and the shaking that's going to be going on. So it won't bother me. Or I think the easy solution, because those do seem dangerous, although they are applicable and would work well, I think the easiest solution is you fly on a different plane than people who don't want to hear uh, the bullshit coming from your whining baby's mouth. I just, you know, it's it's obnoxious. And the fact that I have to deal with it is unacceptable, you know? I don't have crying babies here. I don't go to places where there are crying babies. Anytime someone brings a, a bar or, a, or a, you know, a baby to a bar or a brewery, mostly at breweries, less so bars, but at breweries, people bring their babies and they fucking cry. And they never drink their beer any faster, which is obnoxious. It's like your baby's been crying for 20 minutes and you're still sipping a beer. Chug the beer and get the fuck out of here, you know? And with the planes, eh, there's nothing you can do other than fly on a different plane. It's so annoying. It's obnoxious. Why is that? If I was screaming and yelling for 30 minutes on an airplane, I'd get removed. Even if I was just having a bad day, what if I didn't know why I was crying? Maybe I was just crying because I was on the plane and my ears were popping. But if I were to behave like that, I would get escorted off the plane. They'd land in a field just to throw me in the field and take off. They wouldn't even call security on my ass if I was screaming and crying for 30 fucking minutes. But for some reason, babies are allowed to do it. Now, they don't know any better, but neither do adults in today's world, okay? So I can have that as an excuse, but it wouldn't work. It wouldn't fucking work. I'd get kicked off a plane if I was causing that much ruckus. But because it's a fucking baby, they're allowed to stay. 
I don't support it. I don't support it. I don't support you making your decisions, whether they're poor or not. I'm not going to say having a baby is a poor decision, but the decisions you make in life should not fucking be affecting me on a goddamn airplane at five in the fucking morning. That's how I feel about it. I don't know if you do. Let me know in the comments of these podcasts or email me. How do you feel about babies on planes? Have you ever taken a baby on a plane? If you have, shame on you. Fucking shame on you. Now you go, oh, we were going to see my grandparents for fucking their last Christmas alive or whatever. Fucking drive, okay? Fucking drive. Have a traveling experience with your child, with your baby. Instead of fucking making it convenient for you, but inconvenient for absolutely everybody else around. I don't care if it takes 32 hours to drive from where you live to your fucking grandparents or whatever it is. Don't give a fuck. Stop along the way. Fucking make a road trip out of it instead of flying with your goddamn obnoxious babies out there. Okay. But other than that, Cleveland was great. (laughs) But (laughs) there were no, there were no babies at a comedy at the comedy club. There was a baby. Now that I think about it, I don't even think I mentioned this because everything's been such a blur lately with the comedy shows. There was a baby in fucking Louisville, Kentucky at the show. The host invited like her parent-in-laws maybe or something like that. However you're supposed to say that. Her in-laws. There we go. And I guess they had a babysitter or they were the baby. They brought a fucking baby. Now the baby didn't cry. It cooed during one of my jokes. And, uh, I think I got a clip out of it I should post at some point in the upcoming future. So I have seen a baby at a comedy show, but this baby was well-behaved. This baby could have been allowed on an airplane, I think. There should be a screening a screening process for if your baby is going to be a fucking tyrant on an airplane or not, you know? We all got to go through the security and stuff like that. They go, we got to make sure you're not going to cause any trouble on the plane. So why can't they do the same thing with a baby somehow? Fucking slap it once and see if it starts crying. No fucking playing ride for you, baby. Can't take a slap to the face, you know? But that's <laughs> Or maybe just take its like blanket away. Maybe it's got a toy you take away. Go, is this going to be a problem if the baby starts crying if I take its blanket away? Rather than slapping a baby in the face. That's, uh, I think most babies would probably cry. Which is kind of what I'm trying to get at is don't let them, any of them fly on the fucking, uh, on the plane with the regular people. I don't know. Do I don't know if they have to pay for a full ticket. Someone brought a fucking car seat too, dude, for the baby. They're gonna put a baby in the car seat on the plane. It's not a fucking. It's not even a goddamn car. It's airplane. That's unacceptable. The airplanes already have seats. Don't get your baby its own fucking seat. That's stupid. That's not hold your baby. Hold your baby out the window of the plane and maybe let it go. And see if it can fly or whatever. Instead of bringing them on the fucking plane with your goddamn car seats. But Cleveland, anyway, Cleveland was great. Shows were very fun. Hilarities is a beautiful venue. I did a local show too, a late show on Saturday. That was absolutely fun. Cleveland was a ball, man. It was a good good fucking time, good fucking shows. Uh, Everything was great. Uh, But uh, the guy, one of the guys working at the club, he mentioned that uh, Cleveland has... The mayor of Cleveland has instated a uh, a do not pursue policy for police officers in uh, in Cleveland. It's not all of Ohio; it's just Cleveland. But I think it's a similar policy to what is going on in like San Francisco, in L.A., and like New York and stuff, where people can just steal shit and not get in any trouble for it. Like there's a lot of carjackings. What this guy was saying: there's a lot of carjackings in Cleveland. So if you break into a car and steal it and speed off, they're not supposed to chase you because apparently it does more damage to chase someone stealing a car than it does to pursue them and possibly arrest them for beating up an old lady and stealing her car. (laughs) It's fucking wild. And then meanwhile, all over the city, there's like, signs that say don't smoke no smoking within 50 feet of this of this area of this pillar of this building whatever it was because it wasn't even just on buildings doors i get doorways to businesses and shit like that i understand that but this was just on fucking like telephone poles and fucking street lights you know 
just just like, hey, you better not be smoking. Because they know if they catch somebody smoking, they're not going to be able to run for that long. So the do not pursue does not qualify for that. Smokers are the easiest people to catch on foot. That's a fact. That's a fucking fact. Most of them aren't going to flick the cigarette until they finish it anyway. So you're going to get a few steps. They're going to take a couple drags, you know. But uh, if you steal a car, just don't be smoking while you're doing it, I guess. It's just fucking crazy how fucking just lawless things are becoming. The lack of law and order, which is maybe a good thing. I don't know. Chaos and anarchy. Only beautiful things can come from that. But I also read... While at the same time this guy's telling me about Cleveland and, you know, people, a lot of crime going on, people shooting each other, shit like that, and it just going uh, just by the wayside, you know? They just go, ah, we can't do nothing about what's going on, so it's going to cause more trouble to fucking do anything about it. That's going on in Cleveland. And meanwhile, I read an article, there's a 10-year-old boy in Mississippi who... I guess had to pee. So his mom's like in a parking lot. He goes behind the car to pee. And this 10 year old boy gets arrested for urinating in public in some fucking goddamn town in Mississippi. And the kid was black. Of course, you probably could have figured that out. Uh, I guess the police officer has been fired there, but just the contrast, you know, this it's like, where's that? Where's the happy medium with our law enforcement in this country right now because you either have none it seems like you either have none of it where it's like oh we can't do nothing unless people are smoking close to this fucking flagpole and then we'll fucking come get you and we'll at least write you a ticket where's the middle ground between the lack of any policing and then a fucking arresting a 10 year old for fucking pissing behind his mom's car so he probably didn't piss on the fucking seat you know They fucking took him to jail. (laughs) A 10-year-old kid, you know? So it's like, go steal all the cars you want in Cleveland, but, you know, don't don't drink too much water if you're young in fucking Mississippi. Where's the in-between? Where's the in-between of that shit? Where it's just, it's chaos on both sides of it. Where it's like, okay, we don't want the police officers to do nothing. And so they just let people steal cars. And they go, well, we don't want police officers to do nothing. We need them to fucking take care of the city. And they go, okay, well, we fucking, this kid is pissing. <laughs> there has to be a ground uh, somewhere, a meeting point, a median of those fucking two spectrums. But maybe that's just how, uh, maybe our whole country is that way right now. Because the people who are sensible don't want to participate in that chaos, you know? Most people who would probably be good police officers don't want to do it. Most people who would be good leaders and like mayors, governors in the political system, people with actual leadership qualities, don't want to fucking do that job because they know it's there's just so much bullshit going on. So there's no incentive for those fucking level-headed people to even participate in that nonsense. So they don't. You got to be a fucking maniac. Or you do nothing, or you sit by and do nothing and fucking hand out tickets for people smoking, or you fucking arrest a child. (laughs) What the fuck kind of world are we living in, people? But overall, overall, Cleveland was a great, a real good fucking weekend, man. I like being in the Midwest anytime I can be. Midwest is good people, familiar types of people, you know? I met a guy after the last show... So, or the only show, Sunday, I guess. He was uh, born and raised, like he lived in New York for 60 years, 40 years, something like that. I think more so 40. And uh, he just, he, he just, him and his wife just moved to Cleveland after spending 40 years in New York just because they started to feel, lived in the same place, started to feel unsafe and uncomfortable just going out of their door now. Just because it's the same They're having the same uh, shit that's going on in Cleveland in New York. It's just on a bigger scale right now where everything's just chaos and falling apart. It seems like there's no order. Everyone's on drugs and losing their mind. So, and no one wants to do anything about it. There's no money in bettering things right now, which that's not good. That's not a good place to be. The incentive is to keep fucking, 
keep getting people hooked on drugs, keep uh, ticketing people for absolutely no reason at all, because then we can fund this whole operation that we got going on. And uh, yeah, you don't help nobody. That's, <laughs> that's where we're at now. It's wild. It's fucking wild where we're at right now. Slap contests too. Have you guys been seeing these slap contests? That's a byproduct of this chaos that we're living in. It's fucking insane right now. Because uh, I forget, there was a, uh, Michael Moore put out a documentary. I can't remember if it was Fahrenheit 9-11 or what. I can't remember fucking which one it was. But he made an analogy in uh, in in one of these documentaries to America, the American Empire, and the Roman Empire. And the things that uh, the Romans started to do during the collapse of their empire when it was on the, on the way out. And they, I guess, what the fuck do you call it? Like the gladiator shit in that fucking Coliseum or whatever. That started to happen a lot more. Uh, one-on-one combat, people fighting tigers, all that shit. And Michael Moore had made a reference that the UFC is very similar to that. And I always thought like, nah, that can't, it's like, yeah, I get it. I see the parallels, but I looked at it like, well, people are always been, there's always been like boxing and, you know, people betting on fights and shit like that. I think that's been a part of uh, almost a human nature in a way to see who the toughest one is, you know? And so I was like, nah, we can't be, it's not, it's just always been around. It's not a Roman thing. But then now I'm looking at just all the variations of fighting that we have right now. Cause it's not like boxing in MMA are like the only two. It's like, we got boxing, we got MMA, we got bare knuckle boxing. We got, uh, you know, fucking, uh, kickboxing tournaments, Taekwondo, all this fucking shit, kicking people. And now we got fucking slap contests where people just stand across from each other and slap one another in the face, uh, unprotected, completely unprotected. And, uh, so hopefully you don't get knocked out or you don't start bleeding from your eyes or something like that. So you can slap the other guy back. And if you get knocked out, you lose. And they give you like a 10 count too. So even if you get dropped from getting slapped, they'll let you stand back up to get slapped some more. <laughs> it's fucking wild. There's ass slapping contests too. That's more in like Russia and Germany, I think. But it's just fucking mostly you can probably figure out tatted up women. In the little thong underwear, just slapping each other on the ass and seeing who will quit first. So maybe, maybe Michael Moore was correct in the correlation between the uh, Roman Colosseum combat and the and the combat that we're seeing right now, the modern form of entertaining combat that we go through, because it's just everything. It's just everything. There's every people were fucking. I saw a video. They put like two dudes in phone a phone booth together with MMA gloves and just started fucking punching each other. They've had like two on one fights, five on five, where it's just, let's just run and charge at each other. And hopefully somebody gets knocked out because now it's five on four. All of a sudden it's fucking insane. It's fucking insane. And if it's all, it's a, if it's all over the world, perhaps the whole world is collapsing. And it's not just a strictly a American form of entertainment. Because a lot of those weird ones, the phone booth stuff is like Russian and Germany. and whew. It's all going to be okay, people. Everything's going to be fine. What's wrong with two fucking giant men just slapping each other in the face for our entertainment? And definitely probably getting some of that CTE that people like to talk about. I like how you can't have no CTE in the NFL but then everything else is, you can have people slap each other in the face as hard as they want to for days. And no one's like, these guys are going to get CTE. No one's concerned about it. And I'm okay with that. I don't think you should be concerned about what somebody does with their own brain. Am I right, my pro-choice people? You shouldn't have any say on what I do with my own brain. If I want to smash it against the side of my skull over and over and over again in hopes of winning a, a belt of some kind, then that's what I want to do with my body, okay? So I think I think they should bring CTE back to the NFL. I think it makes it more entertaining. You, you're suited up. You made the choice. You made the choice to play football. I think people should be able to hit you in the head with their helmet. 
Uh, that's not a lot of people aren't going to agree with that statement. I understand that, but it makes football more fun. It makes it exciting. It makes it interesting. Now, should you be doing that? Should you be targeting someone's head with yours? Probably not. It's probably not a good idea. But it's football, baby. It's football. We're trying to win not a belt in this scenario, but a fucking trophy. We're trying to get a trophy and a ring. And if I got to fucking make it so a guy can't pick up his children anymore, that's what I'm going to do because I want a ring. I want to be great. And sometimes somebody's got to fucking become mush. They got to get a little CTE for me to become great. That's my philosophy with football. So hopefully you agree. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the world's it's falling apart. Slap contest. And now we got... This is, this is going to be a hard one to get through, guys. Let me take a drink before I get into this. Whew. Okay. Listen. Kid Rock's drinking Bud Light again, guys. What the fuck are we going to do? We lost Kid Rock to the other side. He made a stand and we were all supporting him. And now he flipped. Now he's a gay, he's a gay lefty because he's drinking Bud Light. It's not right. It's not fair. He was like our, our beacon of hope, you know? Outside of Donald Trump and Joe Rogan, Kid Rock is like, he's up there, man, as far as the ones who like keep it real and don't, you know, they don't be taking no shit from nobody that keeps it real and they're just G's. And Kid Rock, I don't know. I don't know. Some people, I, I'm hoping the people who said it was an old picture, I hope they're right, but I I feel like we lost the, the KID to the LGBTQ plus community. And that's sad. That's a sad day, you know. I don't I don't know how to feel. Can I still listen to his music even though I don't support his lifestyle anymore? Is that okay? Cuz he wasn't I don't know. He's always been drinking Bud Light, so maybe he's always been gay. And then when it came out that Bud Light has been a gay company for a very long time, Kid Rock's like, "No, my cover's blown because all I do is drink Bud Light." And everybody knows that the KID loves the Bud Light. And if everyone knows that Bud Light's gay, they're going to think they're going to know the KID is gay. So I better shoot him with a gun to cover my own ass. And then now he's opening his ass up to Bud Light again. So, I mean, I'm happy that people can live in their truth and be who they really are. But, you know, Kid Rock was out there being a soldier, being a general, saying the things and doing the things that we all wish we could do. Like shoot a case of Bud Light because they pissed us off and watch their sales go down, down the fucking drain and then decide, you know what? I think it's okay. I think I need a Bud Light. I bet all they had was Bud Light. I bet everything's fine, ladies and gentlemen. Now that I think about it, I bet the particular place he was at had nothing but Bud Light. And I bet what he did, I bet what he did was pour out the Bud Light and he probably had like a... Uh, a shoe beer, you know, something tucked in his cowboy boots or maybe a flask. He probably poured whatever he had, not the gay beer in his Bud Light. And it's probably good publicity. He's like, look, I'm, I'm, I fucking love Bud Light now. I support Bud Light. I support the LGBTQ community. I'm Kid Rock. I'm cool. But really his heart doesn't believe any of that. He's still drinking uh, Coors Light and some whiskey maybe mixed together because he's that he's that type of guy. So I think everything's okay. I think Kid Rock is sticking to his roots and his guns, and I think it was all just a big sham. I don't think he really feels... I don't think he feels the way Bud Light feels, okay? I don't... Take that the, whatever way you want to, but I don't think Kid Rock truly feels the way Bud Light feels. So I think he's okay. I think he was just doing it because it got people real mad. And I think he was just trying to bring some peace and unity to America by by pretending to drink a Bud Light, but not really doing it because he's, he's not into that shit still, you know? Right or wrong, he's just not into it. So we can't judge him. But whew, I was real worried that I couldn't like Kid Rock no more. But thankfully, I just fucking talked myself back into it, you know? Because Devil Without a Cause was a good album. I'll say that. 
I really haven't listened to much after that, but did a lot for me. Jumping on a trampoline in third grade. I was like, this guy's definitely not gay. So it's pretty cool. Let's take a quick break, check in with our sponsor, and we'll be right back. Thanks for checking out the podcast this week, everybody. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Magic Mind. Now, I've been flying on airplanes a lot for stand-up comedy shows lately, ladies and gentlemen. What is the worst thing about flying on airplanes? Crying babies. Of course. I don't understand why people bring their crying babies on planes, especially early in the morning. As a grown man with no kids of my own, the last thing I want to hear at four in the morning is a crying baby in my ear. I tend to rage out and almost lose my mind. I was flying back from Cleveland this past weekend, five in the morning, a baby crying in my ear, and you know what I thought about? I thought about maybe opening the exit door and letting everybody just fly out just to have a little bit of peace and quiet. Now, fortunately, I realized I had an extra magic mind on me. I got it through security. They didn't even know. So I take my drink of magic mind and I get centered and peaceful. And now I'm no longer worried about this crying child. The child was still crying, but I was able to center myself, find a little bit of clarity and relax at four in the morning with a crying baby, thanks to magic mind. If you want to stay centered and focused and not freak out over little things, check out magicmind.com and use the promo code Joe at checkout. Save yourself 20%. That's magicmind.com, promo code J-O-E, and get yourself 20% off. There's a link in the description of this podcast. Now, let's get back to this week's episode. Welcome back to the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed that brief, brief message from our sponsors. You know what I've been thinking about, ladies and gentlemen? This is uh, more fucking just being at the airport and shit. It's like, I've been trying to spend less time on my phone especially around like other people and shit. But I was sitting in the terminal, I guess is what it's called, to go to Cleveland on the way out. And for I swear I was the only person in that motherfucker who wasn't on their phone. You know, I was just looking at people, watching them be on their phone. And it's, do you see people drift in and out of reality? You see people fucking realize that they're alive all of a sudden and fucking snap out of looking at their phone. It's fucking watching like the the psychological behavior, the control this shit has over everybody. It's fucking insane. It's 100% a drug. Just watching people fucking jolt out of their fucking phone coma that they're in and come back to reality. It's... Uh, it's frightening a little bit, you know? It's a great distraction, but people are uh, people are spending time forgetting that they're alive and not being present. And then they fucking snap back into it, go, oh shit, uh, someone sat next to me, wow. And then they're right back into their phone immediately, you know? And then the person that sat next to them, they're on their phone, all of a sudden they get up and leave and they fucking snap back into it, and go, oh, you're gone, and then fucking back to the phone. It's fucking crazy. Absolutely crazy. That's the world we live in, though. No one's interacting. No one's talking. Everyone's just on the phone. And uh, I guess it's great for, excuse me, playing rides. You know, everyone's on their phone. And that's, uh, I don't like flying that much. And I think that's part of it. There's no, uh, there's a lack of experience to the travel. You know, it's so quick. You go over everything. You don't really see nothing. Uh, you don't, you're not taking your time. It's super convenient, but man, it's just, you're missing something on the, on traveling. I think when you fly all the time, you just don't get to see shit, you know? And at least when you're, you know, ideally you shouldn't be on your phone when you're driving people, everyone does it anyway. But that way, when you drive long distance, you spend time off your phone you know, you might drift in and out of your own thoughts in your own head and stuff like that from driving or singing songs, but you still have to have a uh, a bigger degree of presence, I should say, in the actual world when you're driving. So, uh, yeah, flying is just, it's such a, you miss everything and then you're just facing your phone for the most part. Some people sleep. I can't fucking sleep on an airplane. 
I'll take a book and read a book and then listen to music and then play fucking euchre on my goddamn phone. And it's just, uh, it's not good. It's not fucking good for anybody. All this screen time that everybody has, you know, it's fucking not good. It's frying everybody's brain. You can see it. You can see people going into a different world. And maybe that's where we're all headed anyway is into the computers and into technology and becoming one with AI and transplanting consciousness into a digital world, you know? It seems like that's what everybody wants, but uh, you're still trapped in the mud body, and that's slowly decaying, you know, whether you like it or not. So maybe transplanting your consciousness into your own phone will be, uh, will be on the horizon soon, so then we don't ever have to snap back into reality. We can spend forever in the digital world that we so uh, crave and are addicted to. And we won't have to deal with these bodies and having people sit next to us at all. We can just scroll, scroll forever in the phone. But someone's going to be in charge of that fucking phone, and it ain't going to be you. I know that. It ain't going to be me either. So just, uh, just wild. Watching. Do it sometime. Go around people. Watch them be on their phone. Go to a coffee shop, a restaurant, something like that. Watch how deep... People get into their phones and how far away from reality, what we perceive to be reality, they get and watch them snap back into it like a fucking, like a quick, a quick drug of some kind, you know, like, uh, what's the stuff? What's the drug they give you when they check your asshole? I don't, prostate exams, they give you a certain drug where like, you fucking get real loopy, probably like laughing gas or something like that. I, uh, years ago, I was like, I guess I was 16. I was driving. I had to pick my dad up from a, a colonoscopy, a prostate exam, something like that. And when I got there, he was fucking, he was just goofy and lighthearted. And you could, and I was sitting with him and you could see him snap back into reality. And that's what people were doing with their phones. But he was on some high-grade narcotic. But it wore off and he snapped back into, oh, I'm present and not goofy and not all fucked up. And that's what the people are doing out there on their phones. Take a break from it. Watch people on their phones and go, holy fuck. It's like when you're, when you're not drinking around people who are drinking. You're like, that's what the fuck it does to me? That's not good. You know, that's not good. Taking a break from smoking, you go around a fucking chain smoker. They stink. They're fucking hacking up their lungs. You go, oh, I don't want to be doing that shit. And that... Take a step back and look at the other people looking at the phone and then understand that you do that too and see how it makes you feel. Just see how it makes you feel. Very interesting. Let's get you the animal video clip of the week and get you on your way, my friend. This video, great fucking cool, pretty cool, interesting video, all right? These people are in some kind of safari and they're looking at a, I think it's a leopard, all right? They got a big cat, leopard, they're like, oh, that's cool, walking on this road, beautiful thing. And then uh, they cut the video, and then all of a sudden a, what would you call it, a herd of baboons? Are baboons traveling in herds? I don't know. A group of fucking baboons starts walking on the same road, a whole bunch of them. And uh, I think the leopard was hiding in the grass. At one point it tries to, or no, it came up from behind. I don't know, it like circled around the baboons, tried to fucking attack one of the baboons. And, you know, it's a big cat. Probably a, a baboon's enemy is a leopard, you know. But as soon as the leopard got a hold of one of those baboons, the other fucking 25, 30 of them immediately fucking swarmed this fucking leopard, bit it and hit it until it fucking let their friend go and fucking ran off, you know. And that's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing to see the baboons looking out for the other baboons. Because we as people, we don't, we don't really do that no more, you know? We're not doing that for each other. When somebody gets attacked, what does everybody do? What do the humans do? We all pull out our phones. But we're much more sophisticated creatures than the baboons who fucking go, oh no, somebody's hurt. Somebody's getting hurt. We better do something about it immediately. Whereas, you know, in our fucking modern society that we live in with the addiction to the phone and the, the possibility of going viral, Rather than help, rather than help your friend getting attacked by a leopard, a leopard, you pull out your phone and you go, "This will be a great fucking video. A lot of people watch this, 
And uh, I don't know that person, so why would I help him anyway? You know? It's interesting. All these creatures that were better off then, but they still seem to have better morals than us most of the time. So, baboon survived, leopard ran off, and I'm sitting there going, fuck, man, they're better than us. They're better than us. We like to pretend we're better than them, but we've all been fucking brainwashed into not caring about our community or our friends, and we have very few... uh, Tribalism has been lost. The the modern tribes are all uh, identity tribes and corporate tribes and shit like that. And it's what you wear. It's not who you are and who you love and who you help and who you look out for. It's all a bunch of strangers that you're trying to impress. Thanks for checking out the podcast this week, everybody. Hope we had a little bit of fun. Thank you to our wonderful sponsor, Magic Mind. As always, go to magicmind.com. Promo code Joe. Get yourself 20% off at the checkout. That's J-O-E. Also, thank you to the wonderful Patreon subscribers. If you'd like to support the podcast, your old pal Joe, and uh, all the ruckus that I'm causing, patreon.com slash utilize shrooms is a great place to do that. Join the Patreon, my friend. I'd love your support, and I'd certainly appreciate it. Also, some shows coming up. I'll be in Pittsburgh this uh, Thursday, the 24th, Boston, the 25th and 26th, back in Nashville, September 1st, uh, Huntsville, the 22nd, Seattle, the 29th and 30th. Those are of September. October, going to be in Utah and also Indianapolis. And then uh, some things pick back up a little ways into November. JoeKellyComedy.com will have you all your upcoming dates and shows. Go check it out. And thank you. Thank you for being here, everybody. Hope we had a little bit of fun today. Do me a favor before you get out of here. Take care of yourself. Take care of somebody else. And I'll catch you around real fucking soon. Later. YouTube, what's going on? Hey, sorry the podcast is late this week, guys. This fucking uh, traveling, doing comedy bullshit, that's fucking for the birds. It's exhausting. It's draining. It throws me off my whole schedule. So, uh, uh, yeah, I just was fucking plum tuckered on Monday when we got back. So I fucking I couldn't get my brain together. I had it in my mind. I'm in my mind. I was like, I'm going to do a podcast Monday, get it out Monday night. But I fucking couldn't even think straight from all the lack of sleep and traveling and uh, slinging the yuck. So my apologies, people. Next week's probably going to be weird, too. And uh, get back into the swing of things through September and October and then November and December. Probably going to be fucked up, too. But I'm still getting them to you. It's just taking me a little bit longer. My apologies. As you guys know, I love you. YouTube, you're the best. Thank you guys for being here. And I'll catch you around next week. Fucking A. Grab life by the balls and squeeze them peaches, baby. Squeeze them fucking peaches.